So here's us. Remember that's our physical form only, isn't it? Our spirit form is basically the same kind of form but over the top of that. And then we have this thing called a soul that most people can't see and in fact no spirits can even see surrounding our form. Now that is the real us and that is a container full of all of these belief systems, emotions, and desires and passions. So if we just write that down, we have a set of beliefs, we have sets of emotions, but we also have desires and passions and longings. and so forth, right? They're all part of the real us. Now, when all of those things, our desires, emotions, passions and longings are all harmonious with divine love, there is actually a protective, an automatic protective barrier, not created by spirits, but actually your own protective barrier created by yourself that surrounds you and no other person in the universe can influence you without your will being involved. Does that make sense? In that place. You could think of it like a great big barrier surrounding your soul and therefore also surrounding your bodies. Right? And the only way now any other person can influence us is through external events that have not much to do with us except in that they might affect us in the longer term. So, for example, if you're in a state of at-one-ment with God, you have this protective barrier around surrounding you. Right at that moment, not a single spirit in the spirit world can ever implant in you a thought that is out of harmony with love. So it's an automatic protective barrier. Not a single spirit in the spirit world, can, or person on earth for the matter, can implant in you a desire that's out of harmony with love. They can't influence you in a negative manner. And not a single sp person in either location, spirit world or here, can actually force you to do anything at all in that place. They can't ever make you do something. They can put a gun to your head and try, but they won't be very successful. All right? Now, you may, your physical body may pass through that event, but are you changed? No, you're still not affected <laughs> by that action that they took. <coughs> so, so, there's our true condition. That's the condition we can aspire to, right? Instead, what really is happening is we've got these little holes everywhere in our protective armour. Right? And I've talked to you in the past about protective armour that... So I've talked to you about this condition. So we've got these holes in the field around us, if you like. And every one of those holes is created by either an emotion or a belief system or a desire that's out of harmony with love or truth. Every one of them. So remember I just said earlier, my desire, not my desire, but my demand to be loved is actually out of harmony. So that creates a hole in my protective coating. And that's a hole that becomes an Achilles heel for me. In other words, it becomes a way for a spirit or another person on earth to manipulate in order to control me. So how do I control a hole which is, please love me? Let's say that's the hole. So that's a, that, that is actually out of harmony with love, that demand. Right? And then the that creates a hole into my soul, which now a spirit or a person on earth can manipulate. How do they manipulate it? Quite easy when you think about it. They give you love and now they have control of you. Or they give or withhold love on cyclic basis depending on what your reaction is. Right? Does that sound a bit like some of your parents? Yeah. Right. So, so when I have this please love me emotion that's not healed inside of me, I then have a demand going out. You have to love me to interact with me. And so I'll have a heap of people trying to please me. And the people who try to please me 
I actually feel they love me and so I allow them in my life, but they are actually manipulating me right at that point without me knowing. <coughs> Does that make sense to everyone? If we have a mic over here. <coughs> What you're receiving in that condition isn't love, is it? No. You're believing, you're deluding yourself. Totally. Yep, that is exactly correct. So how do you buy, so how do you buy into that? Um, well, it begins in your childhood, obviously, like in the sense that uh, of, often what happens in our childhood is that we aren't loved. And so then we go through this process of realising that we have to earn love. And so then we start doing things to get love. And then we realise that if I do more, I get more love quotation marks and so now what I do is I start generating an expectation that everyone around me does things for me and that's proof that they love me so it's a cycle of events that have occurred right from our childhood right to where we are now that cause us to have that particular belief so there's an there's an absent an absence of distinction between well let's say real natural love and manipulative yeah. emotion all this is is basically an addiction and it's not any type of love, actually. It's just an addiction. And, and it, it masquerades as love, but it's not love at all. Yeah. And that's why many times, many of you feel somebody's giving to you, and you'll notice this sometimes where somebody gives something to you, and you actually feel like they're trying to take something from you right at that moment. Does that make sense? And the reason why is they're probably giving it to you because they have an expectation of something in return from you. Does that make sense? And if you're sensitive at the soul level, you will feel a lot of those interactions. James, we have the mic over here, just down your row there. Is this the same portal of entry that uh, other spirits who are overcloaking people can use as well too, e even though they feel it's for, for a benevolent purpose? Yeah. It's exactly the same portal of entry. Yeah. Exactly the same. Every time you create, you have an unhealed emotion inside of yourself that's out of harmony with love, it's like creating an energy system that is like a magnet drawing from people on the earth or in the spirit world, drawing those people to you. And you will draw to you, in that location, you'll draw to you two types of people. There'll be people who only love you, quotation marks, doing things for you so you feel loved. Or they'll be the people who do the opposite to try to trigger you emotionally which is a part of your law of attraction. And this can also be closely aligned to sexual projection as well. Too. Oh, it is very much aligned yeah. to sexual projection. Almost everybody on the planet sexually projects in order to feel love from another person. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, when, when many of you have gone to Mary's workshops and got called on sexual projection, a lot of it is through this portal. You want somebody to love you, so you project at them sexually so they feel nice about themselves sexually and then they might give you some love. And the more shame the person has sexually, if you project at them sexually, they'll probably feel better about their own shame in many cases and they feel, like they feel drawn to actually give you more attention as a result. So-called flirting is like the epitome of that. Does that make sense? When you're flirting with another person, what you're doing is you're exchanging sexual energy with them through these portals of, uh, that your soul has as injuries, enabling them to project at you and you projecting at them in order to get some combined emotions satisfied, which are all, by the way, addictions, and they are all unloving, every one of them. If we carry up the back there. If we Ajay, before when you were talking about... Um, love being a gift and you can't demand it. I was thinking back to not that long ago when I realised that I was kind of demanding God's love. Yep. Um, and you can't do that. No, you can't. But then I was thinking it's more of a request, which is a please love me from God. So is it different when it comes to God? Well, yeah, and this is a very important question and I want to spend a lot more time on it in another subject. The, many of you actually are demanding of things of God rather than asking things of God. There's a very, very different emotion coming out at that time. A demand means that when you don't get it, you feel angry. So every time you're angry with God for not getting what you wanted, you are actually it's telling you that what you wanted in the first place was a demand. Does that make sense? And the same applies with your interaction with each other, actually, too. So, so the truth is, 
that when we have a longing for something, it's not a demand and, and we won't be angry when it's not fulfilled. All right? But as soon as we feel angry or upset or neglected or hurt, then they are indicators that we actually have a demand and therefore have something inside of ourselves to be healed. So emotionally healed. Now, for, for the majority of people, we are projecting hugely at God. I was listening, one lady sent us a song list, as people often do send us things, uh, uh, to, to listen to for triggering emotions, she said. And we played the first song and it was a prayer to God and it, that triggers her emotionally. And actually, this prayer to God was nothing of the sort. It was actually just a list of demands that God should satisfy, right? couched in a, in, a sad, in a sad song so that everybody could connect to it emotionally. And if you did connect to it emotionally, you wouldn't actually be processing any causal emotions whatsoever. You would actually be processing effect-based emotions where you have demands of God instead. Right? And this is the trouble with even a lot of the songs that we listen to that trigger us emotionally. They trigger us emotionally because they connect us to our effect emotion and we start getting into our effect emotion, which, by the way, is the addiction itself. And we've, we don't finish up doing with the causal emotion. For example, the, the emotion, I feel unloved. Can you see that that is an effect emotion? Why would anybody feel unloved? It's because somebody didn't love them. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, how did you feel unloved as a child? Only by your parents not loving you. Right? So when you say you feel unloved, while you may be stating a truth of what you feel inside of you, it's actually an effect-based emotion, and you can cry about that emotion for the rest of your life and not release it. Because it's not the truth. The truth is, that God loves you right now, whether you feel unloved or not. Right? That's the truth. And underneath the truth of you feeling under the truth underneath you feeling unloved is that you were not loved by mum or dad or both. And that's the truth we don't want to feel most of the time. Does that make sense? I don't want to feel that mummy didn't love me. So what I do is I blame myself for being, I just feel unloved instead. That is not the whole of the causal emotion. And you can stay in that cycle for the rest of your existence, feeling unloved, and it's also not the truth. And whenever you get out of harmony with truth or out of harmony with love with any of your emotional processing work, you are not dealing with a causal emotion. Because it's only truth and love that opens causal emotions. Now you'll notice this a lot in our, our work that we're doing with people as groups. When I state the truth to somebody, they immediately go into an emotion. Have you noticed that? So in the last group we had down at Coffs Harbour, a lady um, asked me a series of questions and I just said, just stop for a moment. Just listen to what I'm saying to you. Your mother does not love you. And, and she started saying things about, oh, but she thinks she does and all those kinds of things. I said, no, stop, 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 stop. And I just said the truth again. Your mother does not love you. Right now, she does not love you. And when the lady allowed herself to feel that, she just started crying. Because that truth connected with the feeling. The truth is her mother doesn't love her even right now. The truth is many of your parents don't love you right now. But we want to believe it's love and so we skip over a heap of emotions. And we even, we even are willing to feel totally unloved but still not realise what its source is. Can you see? We're, really, we're, really, we're, we're ready to feel unloved like, and we're ready to cry for days on end about how unloved we feel and still in many cases totally unwilling to see that that's because our parents even right now at this moment don't love us. And we're unwilling to actually cry about that and accept that truth you see and it's when we accept the truth that the real emotions get accessed and when the real emotions get accessed your law of attraction changes immediately not not months and months and months and months and months of crying about a certain issue does that make sense to everyone 
So, so what happens is that many of these I feel unloved turn into addictions. Please love me. Right? So this feeling, which is a, actually an effect feeling, it's a feeling that my parents created by not loving me. That's how they created it. Otherwise it wouldn't be within me. So they created a feeling inside of me that they didn't love me. I, as a result of their projection, felt unloved. In fact, many of you not only just felt unloved, but you actually felt that your parents hated your guts in moments of your life. You know, you remember when mum or dad got out the strap and, and lost control with you? You remember those times? When they belt, not only belt you once, but just belt you and belt you until they realised what they were doing? Did you feel loved then? Of course not. Were you being loved then? No, but often they're saying, I'm doing this because I love you. All these false messages, see? And so in that moment, did you feel unloved? Certainly. Why did you feel unloved? Because you were not being loved. In fact, in that moment, you were being hated. In that moment, you were hated by them. They had resentment and rage and anger and fury towards you. you they hated your very being in that moment. Because if they didn't, they couldn't do what they just did. Does that make sense? Now, sure, it might have done it because they hate themselves and a lot of other things too, but I'm just talking about your personal emotions. AJ, could they have started with, uh, you know, what you're saying they're projecting on their child? Yep. Could that be because that's what they're feeling about themselves? Oh, it's always about what they're feeling about themselves, but th does, does me feeling bad about myself justify my murdering you? No. So why do we even state that? So what we, we're saying to it, see, this is what many of us are doing in our emotional processing work with our parents. What we're doing is we're saying, oh, they only felt that way because. And this gets you way out of your emotions. It's a great way to, get, to avoid a whole group of emotions. There is no justification for unloving behaviour. From God's perspective, there is none. No justification for unloving behaviour. Ever. Yeah, I didn't feel I was justifying it. You were. Oh, was I? Yeah. Okay. By, by the yeah. question. Yeah. By, by actually saying, oh, but wasn't there... As soon as you do that, you're going into this space of trying to justify why they were willing to treat you unlovingly. Does that make sense? You want to understand why they're treating you unlovingly. Why? Can't we just say they treated us unlovingly and leave it there? Why can't we just leave it there? Because we want to justify their unloving treatment because we don't want to face the emotion. They hated my guts in that moment. How did that feel? Does that make sense? That's why yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, I'm so pleased to ask the question because yep. it was like I was getting it, not getting it. Yep, the instant you allow yourself to feel that your parent hated you in that moment and in that moment they were expressing all their rage, frustration and fury against you, a poor, defenceless person. They weren't even brave enough to go and do it to an adult. They, that, that's how lack of courage they had about that emotion. They weren't even brave enough to go and punch their next door neighbour in the face. Instead what they did, right, was get a child who they say they control and is their child and they have the right to do whatever they want to that child. They get that child, and by the way, I'm including myself in this because I've done this, right, and I get that child in that space and bang, 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 expressing my frustration, anger, rage, whatever other things that I'm expressing into that child. And that child, what, that, what is that child feeling in that moment? That child is feeling hated. That child is feeling terrible right at that moment. Many of you have had hundreds of these, some of you thousands of these experiences. Do you understand? Can you see why you feel unloved? Can you see... I feel unloved is the result of this terrible feeling you don't want to feel, and that is that my parents actually hated me. My parents resented me. And by the way, many of your parents did hate you and did resent you. Like many of you women have grown up with a mother who resented you because you became a competition for daddy's love, for their husband's love. Same goes with many of you men, right? 
Now, this emotion, I feel unloved, comes from the underlying emotion that you were actually unloved and you don't want to accept it. Right? You don't want to personally fully accept that you were unloved. And many of us need to feel that emotion, that we were unloved. The majority of our lives, we have been unloved. And we need to feel that these people did not love us rather than just feel unloved. Because feeling unloved is the effect of their actions. Do you follow me? Because some are still a bit confused about that. But, but when I have this emotion and I don't want to feel this emotion, I will now have this emotion, which is the addiction, the flip side addiction, which is, please love me, please love me, please love me. And any person that comes along and who does the slightest thing out of harmony with love with me, what I believe love to be, I get angry. I get upset. I diss them. I cut them out of my life, cut them out of my will, <laughs> you know, do all sorts of things <laughs> in order to prevent that person from ever having my love. Does that make sense? When you are in a space of love yourself, you will not ever desire to prevent another person from being loved by you. Right? That's how you feel. But anyway, we have these addictions. Now, if I cannot answer the questions at the moment because we're getting a little off track, because what I want to do is show you that these addictions become your hooks into the world around you and therefore become the way in which the world around you can control you. Right? Now, some of you feel that as soon as somebody makes a suggestion to you that you're being controlled. Right? Sometimes we, we sit down with some uh, people when we talk, and sometimes myself or Mary gets quite animated about a project or whatever, and then the people with us start feeling like we're telling them that they have to be involved in it. Right? Well, that's an emotional injury. Why can't I be animated about a subject that you're not involved in? Of course I can be. And why would you feel like I'm trying to control you or manipulate you into doing something with it? Only through an unhealed emotion, isn't it? Like in the end. So often what happens is we often have these emotions within us that even the hint of a suggestion to us is control. Right? And that is another addiction. In other words, the addiction is I want to live my own life. Why, why would that addiction be there? It's because I have an unhealed emotion that I felt during my childhood that I never could live my own life. Right? That I was never allowed to make my own choices, my own decisions. I was always punished when I made a choice or decision. So now I don't want anybody telling me anything. <laughs> I don't want any suggestion being made to me about my life. Right? I'll resist it, resist it, resist it. There's another emotional hook in demand into my environment. Does that make sense? Now that can be manipulated somehow. Right? There's all ways of manipulating all sorts of emotions. As soon as we have an unloving based emotion within us, we can easily get manipulated externally. And this is the trouble with us generally as humans. We've got so many of these. Little addiction here, little addiction there, little... You know. I was just about to burst out in song, but I won't do that. <laughs> the song was totally inappropriate for the occasion. So <laughs> um. All right. So here we have a whole group of emotions and desires and passions in us. Some of them are loving, some of them are unloving. The ones that are loving protect us automatically. By the, by the, that's an automatic action of those loving emotions. The ones that are unloving don't protect us at all. Right? The ones that are unloving really harm us and other people around us. So, so the problem is that many times we think ones that are loving are actually but they're actually unloving so how many of us would have thought the desire to be loved is an unloving emotion before we began this right in other words or i should say the demand to be loved is an unloving emotion most of us would have thought oh, i've got the right to demand that everyone around me loves me right most of us would have thought that wouldn't we and we would have thought that that meant we were being a loving person ourselves, right? not realising that that actually is an unhealed emotion that's affecting our connection with God, not realising that actually, in the end, it's saying that love isn't a gift. 
It's saying that we can demand love of anybody and receive it. And if we don't, what do we do? We have a tendency then to punish them because they're not giving us what we wanted. So the whole please love me thing is a huge addiction. And a huge addiction is allow our control by others. That's how we get control by others, by having huge addictions.